lot of optics reviews talk about a refresh rate of the LED and how it may seem that the dot is flickering or flashing at lower brightness levels during target transitions and rapid movement. I have experienced this and I'm sure some of you have too. I got curious about it and wanted to figure out why, did some research and also happened to have a decent working knowledge of electrical fundamental circuits and circuit components from my education as a mechanical engineer. If you know more about some of this stuff than I do, feel free to comment and correct anything I say in this video if it is incorrect. Lights are flashing and flickering around us all the time, we just don't see it. I went around my place and filmed random light sources in the high frame rate slow motion video mode on my phone to demonstrate this. The power that gets piped into our houses is AC or alternating current. This means that the current switches direction rapidly and in the case of the power in your home generally 50 to 60 times a second. This is known as the frequency in hertz or cycles per second. This is too fast for our eye to pick up so it looks like constant light output to us. Uh, my slow motion video says otherwise. And digital clocks even work in a similar way to reduce wiring to the individual segments by ganging them together and flashing them very fast in a way that ends up displaying the correct whole digits. So how does that relate to optic LED illumination? Well, the brightness of the dot needs to be controlled for varying shooting and ambient conditions, obviously. Uh, this can be done one of two ways, by either controlling the current flowing through the LED or by pulsing the LED very fast. This pulsing is called pulse width modulation, PWM for short, and it is generally shown as a percentage of full on time. So 50% duty cycle would mean the LED is on 50% of the time and off 50% of the time. And if switched fast enough to our eyes, we see this as 50% brightness. Now, I have a high-level understanding of what goes into setting up an LED for either one of those control methods, uh, but of course, I, I don't know nearly as much about it as an electrical engineer or someone who works on these systems for a living. Um, but in the case of pistol optics, for example, and this could actually apply to rifle and tube optics as well, or LPBOs or whatever, the system needs to be lightweight and energy efficient for long, the longest battery life possible, compact, and most of all, very robust and reliable to handle either the cycling of the slide or the recoil impulse of the firearm. Uh, the companies and engineers will also consider the cost and source of the hardware, ease of programming and implementation, uh, ease of assembly, and many other factors I cannot think of off the top of my head. I'm sure there are trade-offs to each type of control system that I am not intimately aware of. If the LED is put on a dim setting on your optic, and you cannot see it flickering or flashing when you make rapid movements or target transitions, one of two things is probably happening, and it may be indicative of a higher quality LED control system. Uh, within the optic. So one, the current going through the LED is controlled. There is no pulsing. It's just a constant current level that is modulated up and down for more or less intensity and output of the emitter. Or the pulse rate of the LED is fast enough that even at a low duty cycle, which to our eyes would look more dim, we still cannot pick it up with rapid movement and transition of the optic. Likely these systems are more complex, more expensive, and require more precise hardware and control. But if an expensive optic has a pulsing diode you can pick up during transition, that's pretty lame. Like, what the hell, man? Uh, so I'm going to bust out the whiteboard and draw some PWM waveforms here for uh, demonstration purposes. So let's say this is the LED control waveform of a pistol optic with a little coin cell battery of 3 volts. There will be other circuit components in line with the LED to control current through and protect it, but essentially they will be turning on and off the power to the LED with a transistor that can be switched very fast and controlled very precisely. At the 3 volt line, here and here, the LED is on, and at the x-axis down here, the LED is off. So up here on the top, we see 50% duty cycle, meaning 50% on time and 50% off time for a given cycle. And in this case, we would see 50% brightness of the dot. Below that, we see 25% on time and 75% off, giving us 25% brightness of the dot. Now, I measured these lines and the spacing in between the pulses of the waveform to make sure they're an accurate representation and to scale. I also measure to make sure each waveform has the same cycle time or frequency. 
one cycle is denoted by the space between these two vertical dashed lines. You can see that the 25% on time by nature will be switching slower than the 50% on time because the longer gap between the on time pulses, even though the cycle time is the same. This is why the pulsing becomes more apparent at dimmer LED settings. Now let's say these first two graphs up here are cycling at a frequency that is fast enough that our eye cannot see the flashing even at a lower brightness level like this or a lower duty cycle. These two graphs are the same, that is 25% and 50% duty cycle, but the cycle time is half of the first two graphs. So if the first one can cycle 60 times a second, each cycle as I've drawn here take 16.67 milliseconds, but this one can only cycle 30 times a second, which is double that of the first one, and that means each cycle takes 33.34 milliseconds. Again, I have drawn these two graphs with correct proportions in the same cycle time and lined them up and denoted what the length of one cycle is here with these two vertical dashed lines. Now you can see how much slower the pulses would be and how much distance there would be between the on pulses. And this becomes even more obvious when you get to a 25% duty cycle. The, the pulses between the on pulses of the LED are much longer. And this is where we would likely start to see the red dot flickering and pulsing during quick movements and transitions. So the key thing here is the frequency at which they pulse the LED to control brightness um, if they control it that way and don't vary power through the LED. I have a bunch of optics uh, on my firearms and also just some extras laying around. I looked at all the ones I had and tried to capture flickering dots at low brightness settings with my slow motion camera setting. Um, I also have uh, prism optics and uh, LPVOs that have illumination as well, and I looked at those. So I looked at pistol and rifle optics from Holosun, Trigicon, SIG, Primary Arms, Riton, Burris, and Crimson Trace. The only optic that I own that I could catch this happening on was my Burris RT3 3X prism scope. You can see the cycle time is very slow on the illumination of the etched reticle, and you can still see it cycling at a uh, higher and lower uh, brightness levels. Um, on this optic, I really don't care about that, so it doesn't matter to me. Now what would be the coolest is if a electro-optics engineer popped into the comment section and schooled us all and answered all our questions. Uh, anyways, I hope this video made sense and was informative and interesting. Thanks for watching.